Hello again, and welcome to another book review. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Violence Over the Land, Indians and Empires in the Early American West, written by Ned Blackhawk. So let's start off by reading a review of the book. Blackhawk's achievement is filling a void in historical knowledge by restoring previously overlooked peoples to the record. Blackhawk claims that American history has failed to reckon with the violence upon which the continent was built. No other Western historian has exposed that violence as starkly as he has. So this really is a, um, a new a view of a time period and a group of people that hasn't um, fully been addressed by other historians. So who is Professor Blackhawk? Well, he currently is a professor of history and American studies at Yale University. Previously, he was at, um, he was a professor in Wisconsin, I think maybe Madison, and he's a member of the Western Shoshone tribe. Um, this book was published in 2006 and has won many awards, including the prestigious Frederick Jackson Turner Prize. Uh, he specialized in Native American history and also Native American law. So in this book, he has a few main arguments. Um, obviously, one of the central themes is going to be violence, um, violence that was employed towards American Indians through the expansion. And it's um, it's a broad time period that is addressed. It's not just going to be the American conquest, but it really begins with the Spanish. Um, so his main arguments here is that American history has failed to address the violence that um, occurred in the continent before U.S. expansion. Again, um, he wants to argue that this is a challenge, a sobering challenge that historians must address and ends up where a lot of historical interpretations and previously um, made assumptions need to be challenged. But the argument that I found the most clear and also the one that I was most interested in learning about is specifically that Great Basin Indians were not passive objects in European and American conquest attempts, but they actually played a central role in the development of the West. Um, so it's those ideas of agency, sovereignty, um, decisiveness and decision making. Um, that's what I was most interested in learning about when I read the book. So this is really the groups that are being addressed, the Shoshone, the Paiute, and the Ute. And then the Ute have various um, kind of subgroups within them. Specifically about these groups, he says, ignored by history, naturalized by anthropology, and mocked by travelers, Great Basin Indians maintain noticeable, if not maligned, roles in the pageant of America. And so it's through his work that he's attempting to provide um, more accurate, a more accurate narrative to um, these Great Basin groups. So the first four chapters mark a section of the book that focus on European colonization and the influence of the Spanish and Mexican governments upon the tribes, the nations living in this area. So they do discuss the violence employed towards American Indians. They talk a lot about um, raids that occurred. They talk a lot about slavery. Um, in my opinion, the um, there is a stark absence in American history conversations about Native American enslavement. And um, this book really details that. And there can be some strong comparisons and contrasts made to the um, enslavement of Africans. And there's some similarities and differences there, obviously. Um, and this book really highlights what those are. And um, it's not just that the that the American Indians in this area were passive in their role or minor players, but it it really describes the strategies they used to adapt to their circumstances and maintain power in a um, in in an element of major change to their environment. And then the next 
three chapters, the final three chapters, shift towards American westward expansion. And so this is really going to focus on the time period, um, you know, really the 19th century and beyond and how um, American settlers came through first as, you know, fur traders and, you know, with Lewis and Clark and then moving on to the, um, the Civil War and the westward expansion that was occurring in that time period and um, as well as specifically the Mormon settlement that occurred. So what we see happening in these chapters is um, specific to their relationships with Americans and the deliberate choices they made in the face of this attempted annihilation. So here's another quote from the book. The square pegs of Indian experiences so rarely fit the circular holes of received knowledge that the experiment can appear at times futile. Generations have viewed the history of America without understanding, let alone appreciation of, the continent's original inhabitants, while education avenues remain hazardous to Indian students. So really the way in which um, Native American history has been taught is from a very... Um, uh, elementary uh, viewpoint. It's from a, a one-size-fits-all approach. And um, what this text does is it really brings that complexity out. And it's showing that it's not just all Native Americans were had these specific beliefs and actions and traditions. And it's it shows that even within a tribe, there is vast differences in how they interact and how they um, choose to adapt to the changing circumstances around them. So as I mentioned, one of the parts of the book that I was most interested in was how the, um, how specifically Great Basin nations adapted to their changing environment, how they played a role in that development of the American West. And really those adaptations to conquest came in three forms, diplomacy, violence, and then military service. So diplomacy refers to the peaceful negotiations. So this is where we would see promises, treaties, um, you know, things being agreed upon by American Indian leaders, as well as the Spanish or the Mexicans or the Americans. And these were typically regarding trade or securing borders. And then they did engage in violence against their uh, other indigenous um, enemies against the Europeans, against the Americans, and this was often in retaliation. So especially in the um, 1800s, um, the mid-1800s, we see tribal leaders attempting to keep warriors that wanted to retaliate. They attempted to keep them from doing this because they, they really did believe in the American promises that were being made. However, eventually over time that just couldn't happen and so um when their peoples were were starving for the lack of follow through on these treaties um raids taking captives and murders did occur so it's not always in retaliation however there is a strong emphasis on that that when the diplomacy failed then the violence would occur and then lastly this was a concept that has really been ignored in your traditional American history class. And it's the military service of American Indians. So specifically the Ute were um, major volunteers in the American Civil War. And they chose this, they chose this role because they hoped it would foster more positive relationships uh, later on and allow them to maintain their sovereignty. And it it did. It really delayed the forced removal um, and the reservation system that occurred. It delayed that for about probably 20 years as compared to some of the other groups surrounding them in the region. So what are the important contributions of this book? Well, it's a significant effort to combat the glaring absence um, from American history. So it is full. Um, it is dense. It is it's not a quick read. And so if, if you're looking for some really specific history on Western indigenous nations, you are going to find it in this book. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's immense complexities within American groups, American Indian groups, and you will see that in this book. 
And it's a really strong attempt to bring American history to the center of American history instead of it being part of this exclusionary tradition where we, where people ignore lots of our marginalized groups. Rather, it puts, puts these Great Basin Native American groups at the center of the conversation, brings them to the center of the Western development occurring um, after the conquest. As many American Indians know all too well, reconciling the traumas found within our community and family pasts within the celebratory narratives of America remains an everyday and in many cases overwhelming challenge. So another aspect of this book um, that Blackhawk does is he includes his family story. And so as a member of the Shoshone tribe, he brings specific examples really at the beginning and the end of the book about um, his family and how the um, conquest of the region affected specific family members. And so um, it really demonstrates kind of that reconciling the trauma with the celebratory narratives. And I appreciated that um, vulnerability um, of sharing his family story. He ends with a final question. He says, is there adequate space within the wellspring of American history to begin discussing the pain of America's indigenous peoples? And that's really what this book is trying to focus on is that there was violence. There was violence that occurred in the West. I mean, there was violence everywhere, but he's specifically addressing the West. And he's saying, when will be the time to discuss that? When will be the time to bring this part of American history um, to the whole narrative? And so, um, I would encourage you to check this book out, if, especially if you're from this region or have a strong interest in American Indian history. Um, it's a good read.